Good morning, Trinity Church. Thank you for joining us for a look at Revelation chapter 16. We're going to start this morning by going all the way back to the beginning, and then we'll skip forward to the end. At the beginning, we read about Adam and Eve, who were created by God to have relationship with him, to walk in the garden with him. They had a heart after God until something stole their heart, and it was an apple, and they ate, and as a result, they were expelled from the garden. A little bit later, we read about Noah and a flood, and we see that Noah, these are the family records of Noah, he was a righteous man, blameless among his contemporaries. Noah walked with God, but the people of Noah's time did not, and so God sent a flood to destroy them. Everything was destroyed except for Noah and his family and the animals that were with them. A little bit later, we read about Abraham and Lot, who were near Sodom and Gomorrah. And a messenger was sent to Abraham, and Abraham stepped forward to question him. And he said, will you really sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city, or 40, 30, or 20, or 10? And the messenger said, I will not destroy it on account of 10, but there were not 10 to be found that were righteous in following the Lord. And so those cities were destroyed. A little bit later, we got to the story of Moses with the Israelites and the who were enslaved to the Egyptians. And we read about Pharaoh. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hard. He refuses to let the people go. So the Lord sent plagues on the Egyptians to try and soften Pharaoh's heart. The first plague was that the rivers were turned to blood and everything in them died and rotted. If you know anything about the Nile River Basin, even today, that river is still the life source to everything that happens. Well, Pharaoh's heart was not softened, so Lord sent a plague of frogs. And frogs were everywhere, in their homes, in their businesses, on their tables, everywhere there were frogs. But Pharaoh's heart was not softened. The Lord sent a plague of gnats. The Bible says the magicians tried to produce gnats using their occult practices, but they could not. The gnats remained on people and animals. This is the finger of God, the magician said to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord said. Then the Lord said, a plague of flies. So if gnats weren't enough, now there were flies everywhere. But Pharaoh's heart would not soften. Then the Lord took the lives of all of the Egyptian livestock. The Bible says all the Egyptian livestock died, but none among the Israelite livestock died. These plagues were not against the Israelites. They were following after God. This was for Pharaoh and the Egyptians who were not. Then the Lord sent a plague of boils and sores for all of the Egyptians, followed by hail that flattened all of the crops in Egypt. There was nothing left standing that was growing that was in the Egyptian grain fields. Then the Lord sent locusts to eat what had already been knocked down by the hail. So that finished off any grain possibilities of food in the Egyptian fields. Next, the Lord sent a plague of darkness and we read, one person could not see another, and for three days they did not move from where they were. Yet all the Israelites had light where they lived. The final plague was the plague where the Lord took the firstborn of all the living, Egyptians, and all of the livestock. That softened Pharaoh's heart momentarily, which allowed the Israelites to start on their journey through the wilderness and onto the promised land. But all of those plagues were a result of one thing, of the hardness of Pharaoh's heart. Next, we read about Jesus. Well, we read through the whole Old Testament, and then we read that Jesus came, he was born, he walked on the earth, he was crucified, dead, buried, and rose again. We read about the new church starting and all the work that the apostles of the early church did, the amazing things they did, but yet people still had hard hearts. We're now up into the end of the story and John is having a vision of what is to come and it is judgment on those who are left on the earth. The first one was painful sores that broke out 
on all of the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped its image, people who were not followers of Jesus Christ. Then the seas all turn to blood, and we know what that's like. And then the rivers are going to turn to blood, and then all the springs are going to turn to blood. So all of the living, vibrant sources of water will be turned to blood and rotten, and there will be no water to drink from those sources. Then the sun is going to come out, and it's going to scorch people with fire. And so they blaspheme the name of God, who has the power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory in John's vision. Then the Lord is going to send a bold judgment of darkness over the land, we saw what that was like in Egypt. It was horrible. Nobody could see next to them. And all people will be able to do is just sit. Then the Lord is going to dry up all of the water. So the only water that can be left is what's in your pipes and what's in those plastic bottles over in the corner for your hurricane storage. It will all be dried up. And then finally, the last judgment will be an earthquake that will level the mountains and destroy everything on earth. But what is it the Lord wants? What has the Lord asked for through all of these stories? What has he shown us that we need to do? We need to give him our biggest treasure. And that treasure is our heart. He just wants us to love him because he loved us first. He wants us to let him become the Lord and the Savior of our life. He wants us to make a commitment to him. And if you have not done that, reach out to us at online at trinitychurchbb.com and we'll get somebody on the phone with you and we'll walk you through that. If you've already done that and you're, this is something that's just a repeat of the story for you, that's great. But you probably know somebody whose heart needs to be softened. We urge you today to pray for them, to pray that their heart will be softened, to reach out to them and share with them the story of Jesus. Well, you can. In Trinity Church, this is not the end of the story. The glorious end of the story is to come in just a couple more days. So hang with us, stay tuned in, and we'll see you tomorrow.